polar bears live way up in the Arctic, where there's always snow and ice. Not around here. Also, polar bears are really, really big. They're the biggest bears on Earth. Baby? I guess it could be a baby polar bear, Nash. But it doesn't look right. Let's find some polar bear pictures so we can compare. Here's a polar bear. Uh, they're really different. The polar bear has a long pointed snout and the white bear's is much shorter and squarer. Plus, the white bear has a big round forehead and the polar bear doesn't. That white bear is not a polar bear. So what is it? Actually, it looks like this bear, the black bear. Yeah, that's a white black bear? Mind low. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> 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 It says here that black bears come in different colors. They can be brown or gray or white. The white ones are called Kermode bears. Native Americans call them spirit bears. Why? There's a legend. A long time ago, it was winter all the time, which was hard for the people who lived here. But then it got warmer. And when the other seasons came, spring, summer, and fall, life was much better. Native Americans believed the spirit bear was created to remind people of how hard life was back when it was always snowy and cold. What a great story. What an amazing creature. A white black bear. Mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> There's still a little far. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nash. Yup. Let's go. Don't forget the backpack. I got it, buddy. I'll help. <gasps> Rhinos! We found them. Boy, they're big. One of the biggest land animals. Elephants are the biggest. Rhinos are so big that nothing around here eats them. Uh, what's up with those little birds? It looks like they're pecking at the rhinos' backs. It's eating bugs. I think you're right, Nash. The birds are picking bugs off the rhinos and eating them. I've heard of them. They're called oxpeckers. They help the rhinos by keeping them free of bugs. And the rhinos help the oxpeckers by giving them a source of food. No wonder the rhinos of the ox peckers peck them. They're both getting something they need. Just like Nash helped us out today. Yeah, we never would have made it to see the rhinos without Nash and his backpack. And Nash would have never made it here with his backpack without everyone helping to carry it. I wonder what else he's got in there. <laughs> Whoa! Stuff. Teddy, bouncy ball, helmet, socks. Book, pippers, my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better help Nash get all of his stuff back into his backpack and get it all the way back to the polo mobile. Right, another hot, sweaty, thirsty hike to right over there. We barely left the polo mobile. Oh, <laughs> <you're> right. <laughs> Look. It's some kind of fruit. I think that's a red bush apple. Was the unknown creature eating that? But I thought bats eat insects, not fruit. Whoa! It looks like a fox. With wings, bat wings. What is it? No idea. Okay, so it looks like a fox, eats fruit, has fur, bat wings, and can fly. I think it's time for the polo pad. It's a bat! Seriously? It's a fruit bat, and it's called a flying fox. It does look like a fox. I thought bats caught insects for food while they fly. Right. Most bats use echolocation to find their food. Bats make sounds, and the sound waves hit objects and bounce back to them. 
The bats hear it and use it to locate their prey while they fly. So bats can tell where things are, even when it's completely dark. So does a flying fox use echolocation? No, it doesn't. Its big eyes can see colors, and its nose can smell really well. So it just uses sight and smell to find food. No echolocation. This bat is super huge. The flying fox is a mega bat. Totally mega. Yes, some are so big that their wingspan, that's how far their wings stretch out, are as wide as a grown-up's outstretched arms. Mega! We solved the mystery of the unknown creature. It's a bat. A mega bat. Mega, mega, mega! Yeah. <laughs>